Hey y'all, so this is a quick tutorial on Flipgrid. Um, I learned about this actually at Professional Development last uh, last week. So Flipgrid is a way to basically capitalize on social media. And so it's basically social media for education. So it's a way to do like flipped classrooms um, and things of that nature. So as you can see, they you have my district professional learning that I did. And then um, I created my grid for the program. So what I'm going to try to use this for is my, um, my class. So we'll be using this. Um, hopefully for um, sectionals, um, part checks, and sight reading assignments. Um, this is just the first time I've worked with this, and I'm not sure how it'll work exactly with those specific things, but I'm using this semester to figure it out because Flipgrid is free. Um, they can download it to their phones or tablets. They can actually access it on their laptops and they can use it on their laptops as long as there's a webcam. It works best in Chrome, um, the Chrome browser. I tried to use it in Safari. I was actually going to um, do a tutorial on my laptop, but I was having issues. So anyways, so here is my page. This is what right now what you're looking at is the student view. So when you open up the app, after you've logged in and all that's uh, logged in before your previous um, flip grids as they call them will come up so there's those two grids and mine is the top okay so introduce yourself is the topic so under each grid the singing Spartans is the grid they have topics that you can create so Again, this is the student view. We'll go to the educator view in a second. So introduce yourself was what um, the topic was. And there's a space for you to um, give the introduction and give instructions on what you want the flip grid video to say. There's also the little blue button with the sound is if there's someone who's like hard of hearing or well, not hard of hearing but um can't see that well they can actually press that button and it'll read the instructions to them um you can also tag tag uh uh and um a way to further explain in detail um you can also tag an attachment um, and things of that nature to help with the video. This was one response. Uh, it was put in the wrong thing, so that's why it's, it's up right now. I actually have 44 videos in the grid, but I have them hidden so I can moderate them first before I upload them to the grid, and I'm going to work on that, and hopefully I'll get those uploaded this weekend. Um, so, as you can see, this is again the student view you have the plus sign down at the bottom that's how you would go to and i look crazy that's how you would go to um the screen in order to record so you have the different buttons at the bottom and these are different type of filters and additions so you have the filters and then you can actually like take a selfie and um, type the answers if you want to. I had a couple students do that. Um, you can also use selfies to filter. I know some people use selfies like me because I look crazy right now. If I was to record, I probably would do that. <laughs> but some people don't like to be on the screen. Um, so that's a great option for them if they're shy. Also, you can draw. It's kind of cool. Um, 
it's like Snapchat, but for educational purposes. <laughs> um, so that's why this is a great um, thing. You could also actually like add screen captures or um, students can upload videos and upload them. They can like do their videos on their own. Say they don't have good service in your classroom or in the rehearsal space, but you have them do but you have them do like part checks in class. They can upload it to Flipgrid once they get to good signal or um, good Wi-Fi. So it's really cool. Um, and then of course, they don't have to keep it on selfie mode. They can also flip flip the screen. I had a few students um, who partnered up and they would record each other's videos, their introduction videos for each other. So that was really cool. All right, so that's what that looks like. So once you go through the video, I'll go through that again. Once you go through the video, so I'm pretending to make a video. You'll press the, video. the play button. And so then you can review I'm it, you can make trim a video. it, edit, you'll all that good video. stuff. You'll press the green button and then you'll snap a selfie. Um. And that selfie is what appears on the Flipgrid once everything is approved. So your name, it's your first name and last initial. If you want to add a title, you can add a title or attach a link. You can attach a link and then click submit my video. Um, depending on the Wi-Fi, it takes, it sometimes takes a little while for it to load, um, to submit to you, um, but if you have your topic moderated, none of the videos will t will pop up until you make them active. Um, say if it's something like um, a singing test and you only want the exemplars to show um, like your section leaders. Say you have your section leaders do all of their singing tests early. Um, they could have theirs posted so that everybody else in the section will know what you're expecting and what you're looking for, which is also really cool. Um, but if not, you can hide everything and just be able to go through, um, on your own. Now, when I go to the educator site up at the top, don't mind my screen right now. Hold on being stupid all right so i went all the way back and you have an option for view educator dashboard okay so you have the option students have the option to just go to my flip grid and then there's an the educator tab so for me i click microsoft um and you're able to, this is going to be <laughs> what pops up, Lord, this is what pops up. So you have your My Grids and you can add a grid. A grid is where all your topics are hosted. So you have to name your grid and select your type of grid. Now, when you select your type of grid, you want to remember that um, it, ha it should be something that's easy um, for you to keep up with the best way, especially if something, if you want to keep something semi-private where only the people who know about the flip grid will be able to access it will probably be to use school email. So I click on school email and then create flip code, flip code. Um, you can create a custom flip code. Sometimes I would, I would do something catchy, um, so, you know, but mine right now is, is really easy. So, next, required. What? Oh, sorry. Um, example grid. Okay, great. All right. So, next, school email. So, it's best to use school email or school ID as a way, ID number as a way to, to, um, 
to keep things kind of private um, because if you just use their regular Google email, anybody with a Google email or Gmail account will be able to access your Flipgrid. So if you don't want everybody to see the Flipgrid like that, I would use the Flipgrid. Uh, the I would use the um, the school email. So our school has its own Google domain. So I use that. And then there you go. So it's ready. We've created an introduction topic to start the discussion. Let's kickstart the discussion. Um, if you have Remind, you can send the, the Flipgrid code to Remind. Um, you can also send it. You can copy it. And you can send it to your Google Classroom if you had a Google Classroom. I don't have a Google Classroom, so. Um, but that's how that goes. And then once you get to that, it will pull up your, it will pull up on your home page. So I'm going to delete this one because I don't want another grid. But um, it'll uh, go back to your home page and then you'll see your grid there. So this is my grid that I showed you from the student group. Um, you can see the activity, all that stuff. It's really cool. Um, but once your grid is established, you can add topics. So right now, the only topic that I have active is the introduction tab, the introduction one. The other three are for their January sectionals. That's going to happen later on in the month. And so that's why, of course, they have zero videos. So this is the educator side. So you see everything. There's a pen, a pencil there so that I could edit the topics. All right, again, you'll see the individual flip code. So there's a general flip code that will get you to the flip grid for your class. And then for each topic, there's a specific flip code. Um, you can also add topic guests. So if you have someone else um, outside uh, moderating, you could add someone else um, say a, a chorus president or a section leader, you could have them be moderating um, the videos too. So this is what um, it looks like on the other side. Um, it tells you how many views you've had of the videos, if the videos are live and not hidden. Um, a couple of people put their videos in the wrong place, so that's why they have views. Um, <laughs> um, the ones who have zero views are the ones that are hidden. So what's great about Flipgrid is that, again, they, can, they give you the captions too, even though those are the wrong names. Um, but you can get video feedback. Um, so they have regular, they have like a basic, um, rubric, general rubric, but you could also create a personal rubric for Flipgrid, which is cool. Um, and you could, uh, put your comments and things and add detailed feedback and then you can email feedback to them. And they'll, it'll automatically go to their email that was used to set up their account. So, again, pretty cool. But, again, I'm probably going to play around with this for a couple of, well, I, like I said, for this, this semester to see how it works. Because um, it wasn't very consistent sending it through. Um, sending it through the email and uploading it, DMing it and all that stuff. It was just all over the place. So with Flipgrid, I'm able to have everything be in one place. And then, like I said, again, like students can upload videos and then upload it to Flipgrid when they get better service. Cause I know that was a problem that some of my kids had, um, or, 
it's a lot simpler than trying to download it or upload it to YouTube and make sure that the video is unlisted or private and all that stuff. So um, it worked really well. Um, it's worked so well so far. I'll see over GMEA how it works. But um, once, uh, sorry, once um, I get some, get some run throughs of it, I'll let you know.